Hey everyone, welcome back to our movie news. I asked ChatGPT a very good question. Will the DCU succeed? And what it came back with was extremely interesting. Now ChatGPT is an AI software that gathers information all across the internet to give you the best answer possible. So I think it can help us with this question. So let's not waste any more time and get into what AI thinks the chances of the DCU succeeding are. So when asking the question, will the DCU succeed, Chat's GPT said, predicting the success of the DCU is challenging due to the various factors influencing its outcome. Here are some key considerations that could affect its success. And it lists eight factors that will impact the DCU's success, which we will go through and compare to what the DCU is actually doing to see how likely it is that the DCU will succeed. So firstly, number one, quality of content. The success of the DCU will largely depend on the quality of its movies and TV shows. Strong storytelling, character development, and high production values are critical. Positive reviews and word of mouth can significantly significantly boost viewership and fan engagement. And this first point is so interesting because what has James Gunn made very clear? Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. So Gunn has stated very clearly that storytelling is the only thing that matters, and that is his main focus when making the DCU. He has hired many talented writers to help create the unique stories, and the first key factor ChatGPT believes will decide whether or not the DCU will succeed is quality of content. So Gunn is already investing heavily into making sure that the storytelling is strong, which naturally boosts the quality of content. AI also mentions positive reviews and word of mouth can significantly boost viewership and fan engagement, and we have seen Gunn being able to do that in the past. All of his superhero projects have been positively reviewed, with his Marvel films also being major hits at the box office. His DC projects also had positive positive reviews, but unfortunately for the Suicide Squad, it came out during the pandemic and was released on HBO Max simultaneously, so its box office wasn't able to reach its production budget. It was also one of the most popular films on HBO Max, and when Peacemaker released, it was also extremely popular too. Breaking HBO Max records, although the streaming service had only been out for around two years, so not too much competition there. But we are off to a good start. Gunn is focusing on storytelling, and his past superhero projects have all been positively reviewed and watched by a lot of people. Whilst I personally don't love everything that he has made, the majority of people who watch his superhero projects do. So I would say that the first factor we have talked about is definitely something Gunn will most likely achieve. So, one out of one. Now on to number two, creative leadership. Having a cohesive vision and strong leadership is essential. James Gunn and Peter Safran's appointments as co-CEOs of DC Studios brings hope given their proven track records in filmmaking and successful projects in the superhero genre. So it basically reiterates what I have just said, and even if you don't like Gunn, you have to admit he is creative. And the fact he is hiring many popular writers for his DCU just goes to show he wants to add more creativity to the DC universe. He has created a 10-year plan for DC that these talented writers will follow, but this is also something he said in his DCU announcement. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. So once again, he is allowing his writers and directors to have creative freedom in their stories, to allow each project to feel unique and special. So I would say that again, the DCU is hitting chat GPT's requirements. So currently, it's two out of two. Which leads us to number three, 
Consistency and planning. A well-structured, interconnected universe that maintains consistency across films and TV shows can attract and retain a loyal fan base. Learning from past missteps such as inconsistent tones and rushed releases is vital. And three times in a row now, Gunn is doing exactly what AI thinks he needs to do to make a successful franchise. This is what he also said in his DCU announcement. Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. He is already eight to 10 years ahead. He and some talented writers have already planned out a long-term plan, and maintaining that consistency can attract and retain a loyal fan base, which is something that the MCU has been able to do, and something the DCEU failed to do. And Gunn knows that, as he has experienced both franchises, and so he really has the best of both worlds to understand how to build a loyal fan base, and that comes from making the audience feel that their investment into this universe will be rewarded in years to come. My only fear with the DCU not meeting this requirement is how each project will have a varied tone, and what ChatGPT mentions is that learning from past missteps such as inconsistent tones and rushed releases is vital, and the DCU will have inconsistent tones on purpose. Now I was worried about this too, but I think with how the MCU has gone, with each project virtually having the same tone, it has caused the franchise to feel quite stale. And actually, the DCU varying its tone with each project, but all following the same storyline, could allow the DCU to survive at the top for longer than the MCU has managed, as it feels refreshing to to the audience. So for me, that is three out of three from DC Studios. Number four, audience reception. Understanding and catering to the audience's preferences while balancing innovation and tradition is crucial. Engaging with the fanbase and addressing their feedback can help build a stronger community. Now this is one that I feel Gunn initially messed up on, but as time has gone on, he has really learned how to address the fanbase. Soon after the announcements that Henry Cavill would no longer be Superman, he was very insincere and sarcastic with how he addressed fans who were upset that Cavill had gone, and that angered a lot of fans, including myself. And I think as time has gone on, he has learned that it's not best to answer fans like that, or to even answer them at all. At the end of the day, he is learning his new role as co-CEO of DC Studios as he goes along. And I think the way he is addressing fans and which people within the fanbase he is answering has evolved with time. At first, he would be really sarcastic and quite rude to fans who were upset with the decisions he made. But now he just tends to reply to more positive comments which will naturally improve his reputation and connection to the DC fandom. But I do think he may have burnt some bridges early on with some of the comments he made. But you live and learn, and hopefully the quality of the DCU can win those fans back over. Now the first sentence ChatGPT says is something I really think Gunn understands. Catering to the audience's preferences while balancing innovation and tradition is crucial, and I think Gunn recognises that. Let's Let's take his Superman movie for example. Just from the suit alone, ignore the pose he is in, the suit itself caters to audiences preferences but also balances innovation and tradition. The material and overall design of the suit is more modern, but it recognises all ages of Superman's design. The emblem is from Kingdom Come. The yellow on the outside of the crest is from Flacia's designs. The collar, cape and saturation of colours are from the new 52, and the trunk are from the classic Superman design. That balances innovation and tradition. So I would say that Gunn gets half a point for this factor. Whilst he does recognise innovation and tradition, I believe the way he has engaged the fanbase has been shaky due to the way it started, but I believe it will improve over time. So 3.5 out of 4 so far for DC Studios. Moving on to number 5, Competition. The DCU 
must compete with other major franchises, notably the Marvel Cinematic Universe, differentiating itself through unique storytelling, diverse character arcs, and innovative projects can help it stand out. And I would say that this is the best time for the DCU to try and compete with Marvel. I think the MCU is incredibly weak and vulnerable, and this is the ideal time for DC to try and capitalize. Not only that, but one of the MCU's most successful directors is now running the DCU with James Gunn. So DC have a weakened competition and poached one of their most successful creators. Although you could say that you want DC to differentiate itself from the MCU, and having an MCU director planning out the DCU may cause the universes to feel too similar. However, Gunn is mainly planning out the DCU with other directors and writers creating the projects, and he wants their own unique vision to be felt, which is something I feel Marvel doesn't really have. They tend to follow the same formula and tone, which could actually be why the MCU started to crumble. And the DCU feeling unique with every project could feel refreshing to audiences. So once again, I would say this is another win for DC. 4.5 out of 5 so far. And moving on to number 6, box office and streaming performance. Financial success is a significant indicator. Box office revenues and streaming platform performance will reflect the franchise's popularity and commercial viability. Now, I think this is the weakest factor the DCU has going for it. It is undeniable that since 2019, the DCEU's box office has been awful. So, the box office really is unpredictable for the DCU. The early DCEU was able to make a lot of money, but the box office dropped after their reputation got worse and began focusing on smaller characters and a lighter tone. And the DCU plans to have a mix of tones based on the characters used and will use big and small characters together. So we could potentially see an inconsistency in box office returns in the early stages of the DCU. However, if Superman is a huge hit, then we could see movies that release after it actually have positive box office returns. And as for streaming numbers, numbers, Peacemaker is really the only show we can look at, and that show did pretty well for HBO Max. So I would say streaming-wise, I think the DCU will do well. But as for the box office, we really don't know. The box office in general for superhero movies have been weak, and even Marvel is struggling. So this is the most unpredictable factor the DCU will face. So I would give number 6 half a point. So we are now at 5 out of 6. Number 7. Marketing and Promotion Effective marketing strategies that generate excitement and anticipation can boost the DCU's visibility and appeal. Strategic promotional campaigns and engaging trailers play a crucial role. And like number 6, I think promotion has been a very weak point for DC in the past. For Elseworld movies like The Joker and Batman, they have done well. But as for the DCEU, I feel they always have been quite lackluster in the promotion department. Now whether or not that was because of the quality of movies they were releasing, or the fact the old PR team wasn't the best, I don't really know. But I think based on how Gunn has been speaking, I feel the movies and shows themselves will be better than what the DCEU was creating. So naturally, the trailers and promotion for them will be more impressive to audiences. So I think I will give DC an entire point for this. So now, 6 out of 7. And finally, at number 8, Cultural Impact. The ability of DCU content to resonate culturally and create memorable moments or iconic characters can contribute to its long-term success. Well, DC has many iconic characters, and Gunn plans to utilize them, as well as introducing smaller characters that can become household names. Look at what Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy. Hardly anyone knew who they were, and Gunn turned them into one of the most popular set of characters the MCU had. Whenever I hear a song that was in a Guardians film, I instantly think of that scene it's from. So Gunn knows how to make a cultural impact, and I think DC has huge potential to do that with big and small characters, which is why I will give DC Studios another point for this factor. Meaning, out of the eight factors ChatGPT provided, 
DC Studios hits 7 out of 8. That is very good for DC. ChatGPT ends by saying, Ultimately, while there are promising signs and potential for success, the DCU's fate will be determined by its ability to consistently deliver high-quality content that resonates with audiences. And I completely agree. They need to create high-quality entertainment that audiences can become loyal to and be invested in for years. Gunn was able to do that at Marvel, but struggled at DC. But actually, every director has. And I have to say, I know this is just AI's requirements to a successful DCU, but I agree with what they say and comparing it to what DC Studios are actually doing fills me with a lot of confidence. Now yes, actions speak louder than words, and Gunn saying the story is king doesn't guarantee that the story will be good, but it definitely pushes the DCU in the right direction. So make sure to let me know your thoughts on ChatGPT's response to my question in the comments below. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.